Hey guys, we are back with another short interview to see what happened in the game. Today's third match, KT vs. Jinair. You know, it was more like a traditional competition from both sides. And you know, it, the game was stalling for a late game and then from one mistake the game was over. Both sides decided to go with the traditional ADCs and not like the likes of Mordecai or Yasuo. So every kill mattered in the game. So before we look at what happened in the game, let's have a look at this highlight reel. This, this was the bottom dive from Junior Greenwing, the five man gang. So both sides, we gotta wonder what, how much investment they made into this into, into this dive. The KT's bottom duo really couldn't do much before they died, and I, you know, overall it feels like Jinair had the upper hand in the fight. You know, Jinair was very calculative with their approach to the ball lane, and you know they count, they calculated all the some of the spell cooldowns as well. So this was KT fighting back with Banana Gang. So overall, when KT was getting dived by the opposition, they were a little startled and they couldn't, they, they seemed a little, a little disorganized. <laughs> so they couldn't fight back properly. So players have to keep in mind that every every action they make can really lead to a, uh, can really snowball to a bigger result. So that was KT's dive. And let's have a look at the community reactions. So the subtitle here says both the both the teams play the tradi traditional competition and Junior, you know, they made a fatal mistake in the end, losing the game. And this game is officially the longest game in LCK Summer right now with 39 minutes and 23 seconds. So this is the longest time right now and not we are still yet to see when the new record will be achieved. Jinair was supposed to snowball their advantage in the early game, but they couldn't do that and then KT in the late game was able to make Jinair fall apart. Let's see how the second set will unfold. And here, this is the one-line summary which says you gotta die well if you're if you're a professional. You gotta die well. So it means when you go down, you have to make most most profit while you, when you, when you when you die pretty much. So that is the short interview with Bito and Dangun. Thank you very much, Andy, and welcome back, guys. LCK Summer 2018, our first Super Wednesday. Could be over after our next game. An MVP very easily picked up by UCAL against all odds in that LeBlanc matchup on the Zoe. Fantastic performance. Nor the KDA and the kill participation explained to a top-level mid laner that he had to go against a LeBlanc as a Zoe with basically no jungle backup and make it work. And UCAL said thank you very much. I'm gonna hit a lot of trouble bubbles in the late game. I'm gonna get there. And get there he did. Yeah.
almost able to take down Grace with that last auto attack, but wasn't quite enough. This was the start of the play. We saw the Nocturne come in. This is a trade of flashes that some people would scoff at, but to get them the outer top lane turret, they got more and more gold in the comp that probably never should have been this competitive. As the game goes on, Paddlestar harass was big. This was the 200 <laughs> IQ play by Rush to lose his GA, but get a Baron. That's a profit straight up. Rush fans can definitely feel good about that one. Yep, got the Baron. They closed the game from here. Katie Rolster, in the least Katie Rolster way expected, given the current meta, have shown that you can bring it back and look cool. The least Katie Rolster expected, which probably makes it what we should have expected, to be honest, because doing the unexpected is what this team seems to make their forte. Deft surviving with absolutely nothing with that stopwatch. Absolutely fantastic, but the fight felt like it was already won because Mundo existed and Yukal was doing a bajillion damage. See if Yukal gets the better end of a matchup in game number two. Can't argue with the result of game number one. Do we just brute force the AD carry meta again? Or does KT this time after picking up a victory Get a bit fast and loose, because if we know old KT, fast and loose is where they play all their League of Legends. Yep, certainly works out for them. And the fact that their bottom lane was playing weird stuff in the bottom lane before 8.11 was even a thing. Why aren't they doing it now? Because the weird stuff is the crit 80 carries. Look, I just want some pike. I'm going to be a reasonable <laughs> man. Give me some pike, please, KT and Jin Air. We won't be getting a Graves. Going to be banned very early against Rush. Will be retaining his spot for game number two. Yeah, so not going to be any subs. So no Kakao either on the side of Jin Air. So Rush not going to be playing the Talia or the Graves. This game is KT forced, of course, to ban. The Talia first up, that champion is busted. Do we see a blue side Nocturne ban or a Shen ban? Because I feel like Shen Nocturne will be the red side duo picks. 100%. I am, I'm just certain that that will be the way they go if it's left open. And will Jin Air just say, hey, what about first pick Tarek? Let's see how we go with Tarek Master Yi, because that's another possibility. There was a Yi ban from Jin Air themselves in game number one. Interestingly enough, the Graves wasn't actually looked at nope. in the last game at all, and it's the first ban for Jin Air on the blue side. So maybe thinking to stop some of the duos available with I, the Graves as well. I think it's just Jungle Pinch. Uh, they've already banned two jungles. They might just ban a third one here. Mm -hmm. but they'll just take away the Zoe to remove something. Now, Aurelia is up. Aurelia is the most conspicuous of the blind pickable mid laners, but Yi will not be touched if that one has to be banned. And they just say, what about leaving up a lot of ops? Says KT yeah. Rolster. They're basically saying, Jin if you want that Aurelia, you need to first pick it. And Jin say, yep, that's what we're doing. <laughs> and they say it extraordinarily fast. Much like you did, Papa Smithy. Like you say, as a blind pick, certainly a good option. But now KT. How cheesy we're going, KT. You just played Ultra Standard, which to some people would be cheesy on 811. You can just lock in the Tarek, and uh, I think the crowd would like that. Yeah. Seen it be very, very powerful as well. And with Graves banned away, also makes a lot of sense. But Lulu is there to be considered. What is going to be the next pick that Rush is going to lock in? Lock in. He's looking for the Nocturne once again. But the Olaf can be picked into it and remember exactly what happened the, f the first game. And that was Umpty steamrolling with that Olaf pick. So we could just grab it. Now they prize the Lulu over guaranteeing themselves Shen Nocturne in the first round. I think they still will take Shen as... All right, what about a Nunu? Oh God, we're doing Nunu. Yeah, fast. we are. It's happening. And uh, Jin Air are going to see whether they can be successful where uh, it wasn't on uh, day one. Now, remember that was both of them going for farm duos. And with the Nocturne there, it's still possible that you could go for a farm duo. Mordekaiser would represent that if it was a mid lane choice. Yeah. We could have super powered Nocturne versus super powered Karthus. However, then you're opting into the bio damage. And that sounds pretty bad. So. When you see Nocturne, gotta admit, it's a pretty good time for Nunu Karthus because uh, Nocturne can only commit, and Karthus is good at messing up those people. Yeah. Karthus just wants to be in amongst it as often as possible, and already they've got a ridiculous combination of champions. Jin Air's comp. You're almost feeling like packing it up if you KT just at this point, but they're gonna start by banning the Ezreal and see what they can try and grab for the last couple of picks to round out this comp. Whew. It's scary, though, looking down the barrel of the Nunu Karthus. Isn't it fun how we had two rounds that could have been in any meta, and then suddenly, instantly, <laughs> the Nunu derailed everything, and we got Nunu <laughs> yep. Karthus and Mordekaiser in subsequent picks? 
Seeing a ban on the Renekton. Of course, the Essence Reaver Renekton we've heard about in solo queue, but hasn't been played yet in the professional scene. Where we go from here is fascinating because Aurelia, clearly not going mid lane. It's going to be a top lane or yeah. a carry AD. I guess it could be support Aurelia, which is not awful uh, as a possibility. Katie decide no marksman of the top level variety for Teddy. We do wonder if he'll be visiting that Aurelia. So what exactly. is an old carry player known first for Riven as a Riven one trick. So Aurelia wouldn't be too far away from that. Feels like the so on way and has been playing it a bit in solo queue as well if memory serves. Aurelia behind Darius Vlad and Renekton is most played. Shen is going to be taken off the board, so that of course is going to deny the Shen Nocturne combo. Makes a bit of sense here for Jin Air. KT probably knew that that was coming, and what is going to be the fourth pick here for this team? What are we looking at as far as the options are concerned? There's so many different ways you they could They could have go. solo lanes to go only here and just have the Lulu Mordekaiser as the bottom lane. There's really a lot of different ways to go. They're going to look towards the Orn. So initiation is, again, what they choose in this case. Maybe try to punish members if they're out of position. This could definitely be a bot lane uh, Orn. We see bot lane Orn in other regions. Very much a possibility here. There's a lot of ambiguity about the drop, which is oh, something wow. you appreciate. Now, this is a big pick in other regions. The Draven, if you want to go for something that can mess up a Bruiser duo. Kaisa, a lot more risky. That's saying, OK, is it Orn? So I can just get through lane. A hopeful kind of question mark there. Yep, and also most likely going to be going AP as well. Has been most of the Kaisers that we've seen, and that means Aurelia, the only physical damage dealer on the team thus far. Not forced to, but that has been the prototype, like you mentioned. Waiting for the final pick. Will it be the pick duo that was so powerful in the LCK Spring Grand Final? Will be Kaisa Morgana as the bot lane duo. So actually everyone picked their own champion. How nice on the yeah. blue side. Waiting for KT to show us what the end of this lunacy is. <laughs> well, I guess if things are going to work out the way I suggested, then it could be a mid laner, but it could certainly be a top laner as well. And the idea of Horn Mordecai as a bottom lane sounds pretty exciting to me. This will mean that Smeb is opting into the Aurelia matchup on Gangplank, which is a toughie. It's going to be Cinched. So yeah. Cinched in the top lane against Aurelia. You can just fling and try to proxy many different ways you can play this lane. But Smab, not a well-known singed player in history. What does this mean for the rest of the comp? We're still piecing it all together. On who will be piloting what? Seems more yep. and more likely that it's going to be deft, I would assume, on the Orin. But it feels like it's kind of a fool's errand to call these things early. I actually assumed that Deft was going to be playing the Mordecai. was playing a hell of a lot of it in solo queue. But uh, was expecting the Lulu to be in the mid lane, and that is going to finally okay. be what happens. And it's the Bruiser Buddies on the bottom side in Marta and Deft with the Orn and the Mordekaiser up against the very standard pur purple bottom lane that did so, so well at the end of the last season. And the good play here is about trying to commit onto taking down the enemy jungle. Right now, it was exhaust heal for the jungle Nunu. I don't know if that's going to persist, but that was what I saw as the last. You don't want to draw too much into that. Mm -hmm. This comp usually works from the ability of Nunu to separate himself from the Karthus, and Karthus can just farm on his own with Smite and how good the Q, the lay waste is at taking down camps, and the Nunu can just counter jungle and take camps elsewhere. Level one will be pivotal for both teams at trying to manufacture a counter here. You really want respawn timers on camps so you can try to attack the Karthus when he jumps. Yeah, we'll see whether this time the Nunu is going to be able to buy more than a couple of items because that's all we've seen on a Nunu so far this season. Another option, another time for the Karthus Nunu to work. We'll see whether it happens and we go to game three right now. Jinair fans are extremely loud today in the Soli Stadium. All right, Umti, you're a madman. You have gone no flash on the Nunu. Interesting. That's a pretty good way to counter jungle and die. So we'll see how that goes. Maybe he's going to be more calculated than some of his previous attempts at pulling off counter jungling. Some uh, poor games on Kamiya from spring season are reminded to me. 
But this is where we're at. And uh, that's a pretty cool starting item of Ancient Coin on the Nunu as well. Yeah. There's been a few interesting uh, developments at the beginning of this game. As you can see, so many of these uh, Jin Air fans. We're going to learn something, a Atlas. A EDG fan as well. We do have a lot of Chinese fans from the KT players. Of course, yeah. had a long stint in China for a couple of years there. I've got little gifts from them before. They are very, very loyal. All about level one, and KT have said, screw it, we don't want to know anything. They actually haven't gone for any aggressive vision, which seems risky, and well, hopping in, and uh, let's start off with the blue buff steal. Yep, should be pretty easy. When are we hitting the lane? Is the question I'm going to ask good old Grace and Umti, best friends forever. Probably while there's minions there, and there certainly are going to be, is they are going to wander over a ward, and KT knows exactly what went wrong. But there was vision available here from Jin Air as well. They've set up this level one really, really nicely as Yukau. Be careful, buddy. This is still a 1v2. But, uh, in goes Rush, does have himself the red buff. Remember, Umti doesn't have a lot of outs at all. It's a really fun to watch. It's an evolving metagame here. It does look super troll. See exhaust smite on the Nunu. But Rush will have to spend a lot of time just visiting mid lane and showing that he's level 2, 3, 4, 5. So the level 6 will be very predictable from the Nocturne, most likely. It's all about relieving pressure from the Nocturne and also maximizing farm on the Karthus for the enemy team. So it's just really evolving. It's going to happen again and again. And judging whether the power farm duo is working is never going to be completely watershed at any point in the first 10 minutes. How Yukau managed to dodge all of those lay wastes when he was standing in the Wall of Pain, I'll never know. Looked extraordinarily difficult. But still, now he has a minion wave underneath his turret, and Jin Air just going to head as a duo to clear out the rest of their jungle. Race ducks towards blue and then says, all right, because Nocturne is showing, I want maximum blue buff uptime, so I won't actually clear the camp right now. Blue buff, permanent blue buff, Nunu. Ah, uh, sorry, permanent blue buff. Carthus would be a lovely thing for the side of Jinnah, and with duo landing in mid, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Whereas on the bottom side, we've got our melees just smacking down on one another. If they can actually get into the minion wave, Deft and Marta are going to be feeling really, really good. The fact right. that their relic shields are going to be working, as well as the uh, Harvester of Sorrows. Let's talk about a bit of bookkeeping here. Rush should consider a relic shield. It sounds crazy, and it will delay damage, but given how much time he may have to spend in mid lane, in mid lane mm. it is a very decent thing to consider. Other thing to consider is, let's assume you do duo lane forever. Zero CS Nunu is going to be much stronger than Shared Gold Nocturne when it comes to the impact from the junglers as the game goes on, and Lulu will be able to find utility whichever way she goes. So if Umti and Grace just draw Rush into being accountable in the mid lane forever. It leads to isolated lanes, which for the Kaiser relieves a lot of pressure and allows her to farm up. Janera are actually pretty happy if they just see Nocturne ducking, ducking into mid again and again. Oh. Okay, well, we'll see what is going to happen as the game moves on. We had a little check in towards the top side of the maps, and that's a little bit further behind than so on, but should be able to clear out this minion wave, possibly utilize his teleport again, but in, in fact, he's already gone back just to finish the Corrupting Potion. Couldn't get another dank seal, which is a little bit unfortunate. I believe a couple of them are going to be on the order. They missed the cannon, but the coin on Nunu was the early spoiler that he was going to just literally be a second support next to Grace to allow farm faster. Very different approach. If you remember, we saw in our first game of the season, the Door was set. We saw Bono and Tempt run Nunu Karthus. That was the Karthus independently farming from the Nunu. This is the Nunu literally following Tarek style, which is very different to what we saw before. Remember that Bono ended up with no gold at all and looked very, very sad in that particular game. With the coin, it's still not going to be the greatest gold income for the Nunu, but also it's just a very different spin on the strategy. Yeah. See Smab going down. A little bit low as Rush doesn't have the paranoia available just yet, but he's unseen as he moves towards the top side. Does have the flash, gets the fling as well as now Soan has to be very careful. The flash comes down and the shield's there from Rush. Easy first blood comes in for the Nocturne and that is fantastic news for KT. He got level five and just went top lane pre six and made something happen. Very nicely done from Rush. First time we've been unshackled. Well, I mean, it's a mid laner. 
Oh, he's so far ahead in CS as well. 32. But with the blood boil, guess who's going to pick up the minion wave? <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be Grace. Oh, look at the team effort. Umpty still has to walk about just as far. All Umpty's asking for is to be in range for any coins to pick up. See? He's super psyched about picking up 45 gold. Yep, loves them coins. Play waste wasn't quite enough there. Grace. Okay, Yukal, sorry, going to be clearing out this wave quite nicely. In the mid lane. Tomato just taking harassment as they just aggressively clear out these waves over and over again. Both of them finishing off their Targon's Brace when they go back to base as well. We have double Targon's Brace and an Ancient Coin, and only one of them is on a support. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is brilliant. It's a funny old game. We've got a whole bunch of support items as well. This is exciting. And we've got jungle item on a mid laner that's playing with Smite. Grace's tilted doesn't have blue buff for the first time this game. <laughs> Don't worry, it's up. And they could possibly go over to KT side of the map to do it. Don't have that much control bot side. Mordecai's or Orin are going to basically walk up and do the Bellows Breath W thing. Both of them press W and the clear is all in attempt. Speaking of pressing buttons, that's the wild growth as well as Rush doing so much damage. Paranoia gets him in rut. Exactly the right place and an easy pick off on the very welfare Nunu. One deep ward, enough for them to go in, and they trusted the fact that Nunu wouldn't be able to turn it even with exhaust available. Bot lane. Yeah, that's a lot of damage onto Nova as they well. He's him. burning down Deft. Oh, actually, doesn't find the siphon, but the ultimate's there, and Nova now gonna throw in the auto attacks. That's another kill, actually, but it's over on to Rush on the top side, so Jinna are on the board. But now with three men strong, heading down towards the bottom side of the map. I know one of them's a ghost, but it's exciting. As Smeb just gonna fling so on Deny around. A lot as of CS this way. Yeah, this is pretty ridiculous. The classic singed maneuver as so on's trying to get himself towards this farm. This game turned very, very quickly. A lot of action, but most of it going the way to Katie. One deep ward allowing them to profit in a way that they hadn't been able to in the first seven minutes of the game. But with the ghost lasting so damn long, Casey get a kill with all the madness elsewhere and say, thanks for the turret, mate. Yep. Smeb is singeding so hard on the top side of the map. I think that's the, mm -hmm. that's the word, yep, yep. the Go, adjective. Keep going, keep yep. going. Proceed. And uh, Deft and Marta now able to grab their turret very, very easily. The ghost, in fact, alive for exactly the right amount of time in there. It can head over to the dragon if they want to. You're going to see what happened to Rush and... Yes, he just got destroyed. Nice snipe, Batcha. Very long-range Aurelia ultimate did connect there to guarantee the kill, but we've said the hand in the cookie jar quite a lot today, and that was another one of those kind of things where he was like, I'm going to counter jungle, and that was uh, perhaps not the right call with flash down. I'm pretty sure Yukal has had the most fun so far with the item builds on Lulu. We've seen almost a different one from every Lulu that we've seen so far. Hybrid Lulu, baby. I mentioned the Rage Blade. This is certainly going to be Nash, or as it looks like, yeah. as the first item, the Rage Blade. Maybe the thing to follow. No deep wards on the bot side of the map yet because Mord and Orin took the turret, backed up, and went home. There are plenty of camps for the Darkness to pick up. Yep, Grace is certainly going to be able to grab that as Umpty he's going to turn up. Wear me coins. Wear me lucky coins. He says Grace is going to turn up. That is going to be where they are. Rudikeko is now completed, so Grace is feeling very good about how much damage he can do to all of these creeps. and. As you can see, it's working out very nicely. Only 20 CS is the lead from Yukal, who's just been taking the mid lane. Of course, oh. understands that Grace has been cheating as Yukal does manage to grab the blue buff. I do wonder how, if you consider what's happened this game, Umti's gone from having complete agency pushing lanes and going to invade on Olaf with a combat advantage to the exact opposite of that <laughs> on the Nunu to the exhaust. <laughs> yeah. He now has no choice in his fate at all. Well, maybe that's what his team said. They were like, oh, come on, man. We're going to make one small change. You don't get to do it. <laughs> exactly. And that was because he got caught under the bottom out of turret. That's his punishment. That is going to be a dragon in the hands of KT. Not sure where it's going to go. Mid lane is going to be the option. Now they have double smites. They just walk up and double smite this eventually. The smites on cooldown for a couple of moments. Yeah, trying to control it out of the way of the turret aggro, but it is going to get smoked, as you say. Didn't really have another lane to get to this top lane was so far away, so ended up being a pretty failed attempt. The proxy has led to a lot of damage onto the top lane outer turret, and KT do have more map control than you could imagine. Again, it's a defensive Nunu Kartha, so are only really clearing their own jungle because of the use of the exhaust and the strategy they have employed, so that's why they don't have river control like there was in our first series. 
Pascal actually going very aggressive here against Grace. He uses the wild growth on himself and Marta throws down the ram, gets the knock up where he wants it, but that ignite was perfect. Requiem's going to come in, not sure whether Yukal can survive and he can't, as that's going to be able to take him down, but still the advantage over to KT as Nova is just going to defect and take down the outer turret. Second time he's been on the enemy team, wants to be a KT player, of course. Something that's reminded about, reminded me of Unt, uh, Untara from last season. <laughs> yep. They also pop in another neutral. That's what happens when you got the Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser has a ghost. The Rift Herald is summoned as well. Now yeah. the mid lane is taken down. The safe farming strategy of dodging lane and not being punished is probably going to be gone. So all they really have to show for the first 11 minutes is a 25 CS lead, a couple of kills, but the rest of the map, the members that aren't Karthus are on life support for the side of Jinnah and KT are definitely buffed up. Yeah, Newcal is Pix is doing work this game. You're exactly right about the Nashville's Tooth coming in. Could have potentially been a Trinity Force because that was what Freak recommended in the champion spotlight, if I, rec if I remember correctly. He's just able to get so much auto attack damage. You can see Grace, he was definitely not expecting Newcal to just go battle mode and take him down. Lulu damage, underrated. You're right. Very opportunistic from Yukal, who's had a great series, was MVP of our first game. Deft and Marta, just picking up the 2v2 kill was the big thing the coach will point to, because that's where things have just snowballed out of control, because the Bruise Bros of yeah. Mord and Orin just took down bot lane instantly with a ranged support to help them. And when Mordekaiser was ridiculously busted, I believe it was 2015, something like 2015 that. 2015 Worlds. I remember, yeah, Deft and Marta were or, well, Deft, at least, was fantastic at the champion, him and Mako at the time. But uh, unfortunately, the performance there in that particular world is not one that I really want to talk about. No, not so much. I don't know if I want to talk about the Nuna build here of Raptor Cloak and Nomad's Medallion. <laughs> <laughs> so far, we've had the most welfare Nunas in existence here in the LCK. I need Trick to go back on it to see what he can bring. <laughs> What kind of impoverished build can you offer? Well, Banner of Command is what he would like to build, and ostensibly the upgrade on the Nomad's Medallion. Well, speaking about upgrading, Deft goes back and turns his Blasting Wand into a Rale's Crystal Scepter. We've got the Nashor's Tooth completion. We've got Leandri's Torment for Smeb. Everything's been upgraded for KT. First rush on Leandri's Smeb we've had in the LCK. Smeb, Singed we've had in the LCK, so not going for a gap close item like Shirelia's or the Righteous Glory. Rylai's another big favorite. He's going for the maximum damage. I like it. Nothing to really challenge him at the moment. And, uh, he just wants to kill creeps real, real fast. Move minion waves to turrets. Jinnah, you know, their, their map is getting smaller and smaller as this game goes on. CS lead for the Karthus, also getting smaller and smaller because KT is spending the time taking away the camps the Karthus picking up before. Yeah, and uh, Rush is the beneficiary of this, and he's now 2,000 gold ahead of his opposite number, but I guess you could have a look at the Karthus as far as how much gold he's taken. And as far as that jungle mid duo is concerned, KT are so far ahead. Yeah, it really fell apart with Jinnah because if they had been able to hold Mordekaiser and Orn in lane for a lot longer, the problems wouldn't have snowboarded so quickly. It wouldn't have been an 11 minute turret take, would have been a 15 to 18 minute, would have been more items. They've slowed down that hard farming of Jinnah to a point where there's just not enough resource on the map to farm that KT just through farm is going to grow a bigger and bigger lead. 14 minutes already. Five and a half thousand, and there's just no real mechanic for Jinair right now to get gold back into this game. They don't have true engage, they don't have enough damage on their Karthus working towards this first full item in the Morella Nomicon. Without the map control or the ability to contest for map control, the Singe is definitely looking like a masterstroke because Smeb did his job, Daftamar did more than their assignment, and now the map is so narrow for Jinair. And it was so scary seeing that Aurelia come through because she's been such an incredibly dominant pick. We saw Ian with his quadra kill to open up the LCK against BBQ. But Soan is just just doesn't have any options as Teddy. Very cute steal. My, my true opinion, I said this uh, with Brendan yesterday, is that I think the top Aurelia may be the fourth best role for the Aurelia, even though, of course, it used to be yeah. her prototypical role. I think mid lane for sure is number one, and then I think both bot lanes might be better, support and carry. 
Uh, because top lane, there's so many champions to work against her. There's skill matchups, there's scrapping matchups, there's a matchup like Singe where you just ignore and can push in. And Aurelia holding a wave in mid lane and then all anyone in the jungler comes, that's very easy. But there was never any control for Aurelia to make those sort of plays in the 1v1 against Singe. Yeah, and always, Aurelia always was that champion that does very happily sit underneath the turret. That's why she was so good in the lane swap meta of ages past. KT, 6,000 gold is going to be the lead here. It almost crept up on us because there hasn't been as many kills as a lot of the games today. Rush is going to take down this dragon. Death wants to come over and get an attack on it as Rush looks like he's going to hold it just so that Deft can pick up his pet. And it's going to be that. Takes that one down, picks up Mr. Dragon. See whether he goes for the flanking dragon play. That's my favorite. Just move the dragon behind the turret. What are we going to name this dragon? Let's name it Ray. Oh, okay. Wraith, he's defected as well. This is all about supports defecting. One at a time. Oh, Wraith got smited. <laughs> we do still have two smites, so definitely pulling this off in the mid lane and getting much value out of it. It's difficult, even with the Rylai's. Death just stopped controlling himself entirely <laughs> and is just controlling he's the dragon. He's playing a minigame in a game. <laughs> it's so meta. That's why Mordekaiser is so fun, Papa can play as so many different characters. It's like Banjo-Kazooie, you know how you turn into a bee and stuff? And we're gonna fight on the top side of the map. The dive is oh so good, but it is going to spell the end of Rush after he grabs himself a kill. Smep, very tanky underneath this turret as Yukal has to ult himself just for safety. Still has the flash available to him and Nova survived for a very long time in the end. It is gonna be kill advantage going over to KT, but that was messy to say the least. Is Teddy online enough to actually start fights? He's been just completely not mentioned by us at any point because it hasn't really been relevant in the early parts of this game. Only the Rage Blade, probably going to be the AP build that you alluded to earlier. Still not 100% committed to that. The slow ramp up time of the Kaiser when you're against Mordecai has been fully exploited after that mistake from Nova took that bot lane turret early. Yeah. But Teddy is doing Teddy things. Catching himself up in farm, doing what he can to take as many resources off the map as possible. But that lead has continued to rise for KT. They've been pretty lucky on the Dragons as well, as another mountain is going to mean that KT's ability to pick up Baron buff will be very, very fast indeed. Especially with the fact that Yukal's going this on-hit build. You've got Deft offering a fair bit of damage. If Smeb's over there, he's got a Leandre's Torment, and Rush does a heck of a lot. He's already got his... Duskblade of Drakthar completed. Couple of daggers in the inventory from Teddy. Does suggest the AD build. Part of the ability power we were mooting about. Could be Nashos. Could be Nashos, you're right. It's of course not pigeonholing himself. He's just going for as much stats as possible. Yep. Can I please buy some items? Please shopkeep. Slowly, slowly for Jin Air. They really want to go full Jin Air. KT-esque, I guess, from game number one and pull this one long. Yep. Wasn't able to spy with my little eye how many gathering storms they're running. You were talking about Smeb's build and needing to go for the super speedy option. Shirley's Reverie will certainly do that. It looks like it's next on the docket. Here for Smeb. KT moving down towards the bottom lane though. It's three members of Jin Air just stuck dealing with this bannered up minion. Pesky banner minion in the mid lane. Marta. 2-0 and 3 on the Orn. Great performance so far. It was a nice pick for him when uh, Orn was at his highest power level in the support role early in spring season. Fell away after that. I'm sure they were hedging their bets with the Orn and deciding where to put it later. Yep. Yukal just being frustrating. He's going to just not really care about the backdoor bonus. Take down this inner turret. So that's two for the price of one. If KT, who are just moving between the lanes, taking jungle camps. This lead is only extending as Yukal's in trouble. Uses the wild growth. Can he actually turn it? As that's the one for one coming in. The Requiem was what took down Yukal. And I felt like he could possibly have even taken that 1v1. Teddy looked for it, couldn't find it. And the flash down from Teddy as well, flashed after the Nocturne was already going, so no way to get away from that damage was cleaned up easily. Not worth it in my opinion for the side of Jin Air. The flash even more consequential than the long cooldown that comes through on the Requiem. Not able to back this one up. The yeah, item's still not there for Grace. And this is the inevitability I saw. This is what happens when you run these Bruiser comps and one of them gets ahead. We haven't seen a Mordecai get ahead in a while, but they've been able to get access to so many more resources that have been available to the side of Jin Air that this stall is feeling like a death knell to the hopes of Jin Air Greenwings. Yeah. 
Just a little bit of a disaster. Jinnap. Okay, moving the more uh, the the Carthus, sorry, to the mid lane to pick up this wave. The Death's delivering, but when is going to be the opportunity for the Baron? Has just spawned. We've got Mountain Drake coming up in about a minute and a half, and Marta has so much deep vision available. Look at all of the red wards. They are pinging on the Baron right now. This is going to be a very early one. But as you can see, they got a fair bit of damage, and they should be able to just tank this one up pretty happily. And uh, the enemy team can't see anything until this one bit of spot vision goes down. The Baron will be cleaned up by Casey very easily. Not anything that they could do about it whatsoever. They were just wandering over wards, and they had to take the time to clear them out. Just wasn't doing. And we've got an 11,000 gold lead at 21 minutes. This feels like it's been slowly extending and extending as this game goes on. And that was unfortunately the reality. It's why I said, what is the comeback mechanic for the side of Jinnae? You've got a hard farming duo that can't get to farm. You've got an Aurelia that's being out by the Singed and pushed in many a time. So she's under an inner turret because of that. And Kai'Sa Mork aren't going to be able to do anything other than wave a white flag when they see the duo of the Bash Brothers coming along in Mordecai Zanorn. Just with how the matchups played out in this game, losing mid lane turret was basically losing the game. Well, so far, it certainly worked out that way. Two and a half minutes here for KT. They don't exactly have the best siege. So, uh, we want to try and find good things to talk about for Jin Air. Maybe taking down to half health, though, as Yukal just happily dancing. He's had a great day today for KT. Doesn't have his backup in pawn anymore. He's the sole mid laner here for KT, but must be feeling good about that one. For now, Rush just lying in wait. Trying to get paranoid on someone. So they're being annoying. So the 131 is certainly how they're going to be pushing these waves in, just because he's going to stretch Jin Air a little bit thinner, allow some turret damage. Pushing them in multiple lanes. First turret falls on the top side as on hit Lulu. Yeah. Messing up some falls. I guess structures for now. Does also have him rolling Omicron, so a fair bit of AP here as well. But that's just going to be all of them going down in quick succession, one after the other. Looking for a potential ability to get onto death, but no, it's going to be rushed with the engage. Flashes after, uses the stopwatch, but Teddy is going to survive for the moment. Can this be an overextension here? For Jinnah, I'm not entirely sure. So on, he's gonna go down. Look at how fast Smebib is wanting to just throw someone back into his team. But it looks like KT, they just wanna take down the structures. Looks like the 2 0 for KT is happening so much earlier than in game number one. It was a 40 minute slugfest that time around. Now, 23 minutes in, the Requiem is just there because he can on the side of Grace. And that's going to be that KT with the 2-0. KT in the first game, bring it back to the slow meta and say, we will endure. In the second game, they see Nunu Karthus and they dispatch it without even blinking. KT Rolster looking very formidable. It wasn't exactly the way we thought they would. We did not think they would come in and play controlled when they had the option of going for more of this style, but they can also scrap with the best of them and they certainly out scrapped Jeanette. Yeah, I love the fact that they can move to the style that we were probably more expecting from KT moving into this matchup. If you had a look at Deft's uh, solo queue recently, then that has certainly been what he's been playing. A heck of a lot of Mordekaiser has been in there. So this is what I was wanting out of KT when we moved into game number one. They surprised the heck out of me by playing the least KT composition possible. But uh, the sad planes once again are going to be flying not exactly the biggest test here for KT. We we're talking about the fact that it was more of a middle ranked team on the side of Jin Air. Still want to see more out of KT when they face some of their bigger opponents, but Jin Air made a slight adjustment. Of course, Kakao hasn't been seen just yet, but Nova on the bottom side of the map. Struggling a little bit in game number two, and otherwise hasn't turned too many heads so far here for Jin Air. But we never draw too much from the first series or the, even the first round robin True. when it comes to KT. It is a new dawn. Yukal is their only mid laner. People saw the fact that Pawn wasn't on the roster and said, this will mean KT will struggle. But of course, people who stuck with KT towards the end of spring knew Yukal would have been by far the starting player. We've seen very little of Pawn anyway. Yukal had a fantastic series, even the on hit. Uh, Lulu was popping off in this game. Speaking of popping off, 
Arthas with free farm with all the gold was able to do 11,000 damage. And Nunu with no farm, you know, it's not the lowest ever, but it's, uh, it's less than 612, so it's not so good. Yeah, it feels like they were more of a combo uh, situation anyway, so I'm not going to blame you too much. I'm deep at the Nunu Karthus was not really what it was toted to be when we were hearing about the stories of Solo Q. And uh, I wasn't expecting Jinair's composition to have this much trouble, but when Marta and Deft get ahead on the bottom side early, when Teddy can't do anything for Jinair, you know that that's always going to spell bad news. Probably the least time we've said Teddy's name in any Jinair game, because... Yeah. Just was a passenger and on a pretty bad bus, I guess, because <laughs> he was just kind of like, "Well, I lost my turret." The passenger and, uh, off a cliff. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was struggle street that time for Teddy. Who's going to be the MVP? It's once again going to be Yukal in the mid lane. I mean, have that solo MVP interview for two and two. And I think if KT are to go on to do well, even to win the regular season, we're not talking about playoffs just yet. I think this man will be the overall MVP because he is a true star. Still 17 years old, only turned 17, and was legal to play at the end, January 30th, I believe it was, this year. So very, very young, a 2001 birthday. And he is wise and also just smart beyond his years, comes in, this is a very nice ward put down earlier that allowed them to get the kill. But after bot lane was also able to bruise through, it felt like KT's game was pretty much locked in. Yeah, death with the fadeaway. Cool guys don't look at explosions and Novo is able to defect and take down the turret. Here in the mid lane, I mean, Marta as well needs an honorable mention. Certainly played out the Ornn fantastically well. And able to team up with Deft and get the work done. He almost died to that Requiem, didn't actually notice that. but where Yukal fell, but this fight is absolutely insane. Setting it up for Rush, and that shouldn't have happened, honestly. Last fight, all about Rush just being gigantic. Yeah, KT comically ahead at this point, so obviously yeah. we're not going to be hyping too much on Lulu auto attacking a lot and pressing some utility abilities <laughs> on yeah. Singed and friends. As Singed was just able to go so damn fast with his passive there. The slipstream picking up from the enemy champions. A happy, happy time. And we're going to have an extended interview with that man in the mid lane, Yukal. Yeah, it's going to be just Yukal this time around. So we do manage to get a few more yeah, words out of him. So let's throw it over to Andy for some translation. KT Rollster picks up a convincing victory against Jinne against Green Wings. We are here with Yukal of KT. So you're now ranked first in the MVP ranking. Hello, I'm Yukal of KT. I'm the middle laner of KT. You know, it feels good to take the convincing victory in our day one of LCK Summer. I mean, you look really happy. <laughs> I mean, now you're more, you look more like a veteran now. And next to you is Rush, who was also very instrumental to your victory today. <laughs> Would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, I'm the jungler of KT, Rush. So first of all, I want to say something to you, Rush. You've shown amazing performance on Nocturne today. Like, it was almost like watching a missile fly by. So we do have a highlight reel prepared. So let's have a look at the highlight reel. So here, you use the ult, you use the paranoia, and then the enemy opposition lost, lost their sight, and then you just go in deep inside their enemy terrain. <laughs> you know, I am really sorry for, to my teammates for doing this. No, first, like, initially, I just wanted to... I just wanted to make everything dark and just, you know, look how things go. And then, you know, I just had to go in. And it wasn't a wise move. 
You know, if you just rush in like that, your teammates could, you know, just get like startled, right? So honestly, Yukal, what was your what was your feeling when Rush just went in? You know, we were told that we were not gonna go in, and then Rush just single-handedly, you know, rushed into the enemy terrain. You know, Rush was probably struggling between the internal internal rush and the outer rush. But in the end, KT fights back really well and is able to take the victory. You know, it was a back and forth match overall. So what was your mindset going to this game? Yeah, during the picks and bans, we had a lot of thoughts, and you know, we didn't really expect the Karsis and the Nunu. You know, in the ADC vs ADC matchup in the current meta, did you um did you expect them to go with the ball with the opposition opposition ball lane? Yes, we predicted that they would pick um Kaisa. So I just want to ask you about the item build. You actually went for an early Guardian Angel. So what was the idea behind it? You know, even if I raise my damage, it wasn't really um, gonna affect whether the enemy dies or not. So, you know, I picked survivability and I pri prioritized it. So, yeah, that's why I went for Guardian Angel. <laughs> and Rush, you seem like a very logical man when you're speaking. So you call a lot of fans are curious as to you know, the, the mainstream like mid champions right now are like Zoe and Talia. So what else do you think you can implement in the mid lane? I feel like a lot of the other champions can be used um, quite competitively in the mid lane. And you always emphasize that the jungle and the mid synergy is very important in league. So, you know, in the, the second set really seemed very in inspirational to me. You know, the enemy picked Karsus Nunu and it feel, felt like you countered that composition really hard, you call. So, do you really um, know what the counter is to that composition? Whether it be Mastery or Mastery Tarik or Kasus Nunu, we met a lot of them in the scrims. And we um, experimented a lot and we definitely found this counter to counter this composition. composition. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like your Lulu went for Nashers and was focusing on attack speed, attack speed. So that's not too conventional on Lulu, so what are your thoughts on that? You know, I felt like even if I went for attack speed, I knew I would win the game. So Rush, I want to ask you something. <laughs> you know, people are debating about Karsus Nunu versus Mastery Tarik. Which one's stronger? So, Rush, what do you think? Personally, I feel like if the Karsus player is really proficient, the Karsus Nunu can overpower almost any other competition. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was a jungler's perspective. Now let's listen to the mid laner's perspective. <laughs> you know, in Karsus' per Karsus perspective, if Nunu is really bad, it's just really, it's just really hard to play as a Karsus. 
So there was the perspective of the jungler and the mid laner. <laughs> Rush, last question for you. Between you and score, who do you think is a better mastery player? <laughs> you know, before coming here, I let score play mastery Tarik co uh, combo, and the result was bad. Okay, we have another highlight reel. No, Lulu is actually dishing out a lot of damage. You know, I trusted my mechanics and I was able to play with confidence. You know, I never get hit by Karsus Q, so I'm not really scared of Karsus. I can just dodge it. <laughs> you know, I felt sorry for the enemy causes, so I just intentionally got hit by hit by the Q sometimes. You know, last spring, Yukao, you were the youngest member in the LCK. Now that's no more. So Griffin's Chovy, who is who was born in 2000, is now officially the youngest member in the LCK. So do you have any advice for the new rookies? As a rookie, I hope you are not like too demoralized, and I hope you play with confidence. And yeah, just overall have more confidence. Yeah, I see. I mean, you call back in your rookie times, you were very confident as well. You know, in the first set was more like a, you know, the conservative composition, the EU meta. But the second one was definitely different. You know, like overall today you showed very entertaining matches for the fans. And would you like to say a few words to your fans before ending the interview? <laughs> I'll strive hard to show the best side of me. And you call you? Would you like to say a few words to your fans, your, to your KT fans? I mean, this summer season, there were a lot of changes going on. But we will try our best and overpower any, any other teams. And there was an interview with KT Rush and KT Yukao. Thank you very much, Andy. And uh, Yukao is certainly got a little bit more confident since last he was into I gotta City. say, he wasn't that unconfident the first time. It was still a bit new to him, but in the game, always been confident. In the interviews, getting more confident. We haven't seen the final form of you, Carl, and he is a super rookie, if there ever was one. And have I got a super story to sell, tell both you, Atlas, and the OGN Legion at home? The next time KT play will be an OGN match day. It will be Saturday, and they play the Afrika Freaks in the battle of the two best teams we've seen on Patch 811. Yeah, you can see them at the top of the rankings right there. KT, Afrika, MVP up there as well, who we are going to be seeing tomorrow, of course. So we'll see whether they're going to be able to keep their top spot because it's not necessarily against the top of the competition. MVP starting off a little bit light as far as their run is concerned, but did show us some good things. And uh, so far, I mean, everyone has played now. And as far as who's looked the most impressive, I guess it's difficult to really understand. Maybe Afrika looking like the strongest team, but KT's ability to slow down the game or speed it up as they want has been very nice. Very excited to see more of MVP. They looked great yesterday against, admittedly, BBQ. They placed Griffin in two winners, so we will have two 2-0 teams at the end of the week. But of course, the big match is Saturday. That Afrika Freaks versus KT match is going to be an excellent one. You and I will be back tomorrow.
We will get the teams that played yesterday on the first match day. Yeah. I'm alive, eSports and BBQ. Someone has to have their first match win of the season. And then MVP versus Griffin. MVP certainly looked like the better of the two teams based on, of course, just one best of threes play. We've seen it one best of three from everyone. We've seen very little agreement on what should be bad, what should be first picked, what is the best way to play League of Legends. We won't know it by tomorrow. We might not know it in two weeks' time. I just need to know more. I need the spoilers. Yep. I need to know where it's all going. We need to understand whether the Ash pick is genius, whether there just wasn't the right idea as far as countering it. So many things still left to learn, but there's so much LCK Summer still to go. That's going to be it for us for tonight, but we'll see you all at home tomorrow. Good night.